Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about an object we don't normally discuss very much, Mercury. Now I wanted to actually talk about why we don't have many missions coming here, but also talk about the mission that's most likely going to start this year in 2018 and the missions plan for this beautiful object. Welcome to What The Math. So, Mercury is one of the terrestrial planets and it's the closest planet to the Sun and it's also the planet that has um, quite um, a very interesting surface, very very reminiscent of our own Moon. It actually resembles our Moon quite a lot. But um, interestingly, there has only been two missions to Mercury. Mariner 10 mission back in uh, 1974 and the Messenger mission that uh, started in 2004 and actually crashed landed, or technically just crashed, onto the uh, Mercurian surface back in 2015. And this particular mission actually stayed here uh, for quite a long time. It even got to orbit 4,000 times around Mercury and analyze its surface, its magnetosphere, um, answer a lot of questions about uh, the origin of Mercury, and then basically what happens if you crash land into this beautiful planet. But uh, except for this particular mission, there's only one more mission planned, and that's the mission known as Bepi Colombo by ESA, European Space Agency, and also GSA, which is the Japanese Space Agency. Um, they are planning to basically launch their mission, which will orbit Mercury with two probes, and uh, they're going to map this planet and also study its magnetosphere in a little bit more detail. Uh, but it's only going to get here in 2025. So what is actually happening here? And why is it that we don't have more missions here? And the answer to this is actually pretty easy. It's really difficult to get here. Despite its close distance to Earth, Mercury is exceptionally difficult to try to get into orbit around. Now, why is that? Well, let's take a look at orbits in Universe Sandbox so I can actually explain it to you. So here is kind of what our solar system looks like from the top here with Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter, and as you come closer, you'll see Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury. The distance between Earth and Mercury is actually not very high at all. It's less than uh, 0.7 AU, which is basically, um, I guess, around 100 million or so kilometers, just over that. And um, it's definitely a lot closer to Earth than, let's say, Jupiter or Saturn, and we know that there are a lot of missions that have already been accomplished on these two objects and more missions planned. We actually have a mission uh, coming up for Saturn that's going to uh, most likely have some dramatic scientific results. So why is it that Mercury is not really that well investigated usually? And the explanation is really, um, well, it's kind of easy to explain once you see what's going on here. The actual velocity of Mercury around the Sun, especially at the closest point, reaches about 60 kilometers per second, whereas the velocity, the orbital velocity of Earth is just around 30 kilometers per second. So the difference here is quite dramatic, it's about 30 kilometers per second difference. On the other hand, the difference between Jupiter and Earth is only about 18 kilometers per second. So in other words, it's actually technically quite easy to get to Jupiter, but not as easy to get to Mercury. Even at the farthest approach where the Mercury speed is the lowest, which is usually when we try to get there, the uh, what's known as delta V or basically the uh, velocity budget to get to various objects and various planets is just a little bit less than Jupiter. You can actually see this on Wikipedia. This is the so-called uh, Delta V budget uh, table. And you can see that for uh, Mercury, it is just a little bit less than Jupiter and definitely much more than both Venus and Mars. And what's more is that if you try to orbit around Mercury, this would suddenly go up to about 12.5 kilometers per second. This is actually in kilometers per second. And what this implies is that if you wanted to transfer from low Earth orbit, basically orbit around Earth, kind of like where International Space Station is, 
and then get to Mercury and orbit around Mercury, you would need about 12.5 kilometers per second of fuel, also known as Delta V, which is actually more than you need to leave the solar system. And this is really the main reason why, well, most missions to Jupiter and Saturn don't really require as much fuel because you can technically use the atmosphere of those planets to kind of slow down and get into orbit, although it's not very often used. But you can also use other objects to kind of slow down. Whereas for Mercury, getting into orbit is very difficult. So, for example, the messenger mission that you see on the screen right now um, actually had quite a lot of orbits around um, the Sun and basically used Venus and Earth to try to slow down uh, by using the so-called uh, slingshot maneuvers, which is actually what the Parker Solar Probe is actually doing right now as well. It's going to be using Venus and Earth for slingshot maneuvers that will change its orbit and make it move closer to the Sun. So we could use Venus and Earth to slow down those uh, probes and rockets to get to Mercury, but it does take several years and at the same time you still need a lot of fuel to then get into orbit around Mercury and that's something that we currently don't really have technology for, at least not for an orbit where you can comfortably have a satellite like this. This would be very very difficult to achieve and we just don't really have rockets or technology for this just yet. Uh, as a matter of fact, the messenger mission had an extremely extremely eccentric orbit around Mercury when it actually got there. And that's because that was the only orbit it could establish. Uh, it was very, very difficult to achieve, and once it was able to achieve it, it couldn't really change it anymore. And so this is kind of how we were able to do it uh, back in 2015. But nevertheless, this mission right here, known as Bepi Colombo, is being launched, uh, well, very soon in October of 2018. And if you're watching this from the future, it's probably already on the way to Mercury. And it's going to be studying magnetic field, magnetosphere, um, and pretty much everything else, including the interior and the surface of Mercury. But all of this will only start in December of 2025. So it will actually take it over seven years to try to finally get to Mercury with two flybys of Venus and um, a single flyby of Earth and six flybys of Mercury itself. So it's going to be quite a while before it gets into a stable orbit. It's also going to be using a very interesting solar electric propulsion um, and of course gravity assists to try to get into orbit around Mercury. And um, if you look at the actual mission schedule, you'll realize that there's quite a lot of things happening here before it finally actually makes it into the stable orbit around Mercury. Quite a lot of different flybys and quite a lot of attempts to basically get into a more stable orbit around this beautiful planet. Now, unfortunately, it's very likely you're not going to really hear much about this mission, though, mostly because I guess there's just not a lot of interest in Mercury in general. It's not really as dramatic and as exciting as Mars, and it doesn't have as many cool objects around it like Jupiter and Saturn. So in that sense, it's very likely that, well, maybe you'll hear about this in the news once and you'll probably forget about it. So by the time the mission finishes, most people won't even know. And that's kind of sad, I guess, because Mercury is a really, really awesome planet. So hopefully we'll actually get to discover something really unusual about it so that people get more excited about Mercury as well. But nevertheless, though, it's still very, very difficult to get here. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And so now hopefully you understand a little bit more about the beautiful Mercury and why it's actually so difficult to get here for various space probes and spacecraft. Despite its relatively close distance to us, it's moving just too fast around the sun. And so we do need tons and tons of fuel. And so it's very likely we'll probably never really have a manned mission here, at least not in the next few decades. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye bye.